So this is the video that everyone's been waiting for. Finally, we're going to be looking at gaming on the M3 Max. So this is the MacBook Pro 16 inch, and this has the decked out version of the M3 Max chip, and it has 16 CPU cores. That's 12 performance cores and four efficiency cores. We have 48 gigabytes of RAM and 40 GPU cores. We're gonna be looking at five native ARM macOS titles, which have been optimized for the Apple Silicon chip. And we're gonna be looking at four different Windows games running DirectX 11 and 12, being run through the translation layer crossover and game porting toolkit. And we're gonna see if the M3 Max is actually capable of gaming. Now, I can already see the comments below. I'm fully aware that the M3 Max is way overkill for the majority of people, especially as a gaming machine. And if you're truly a passionate gamer, then you should probably think twice before you buy something ridiculous like the M3 Max, especially if you're upgrading solely for the purpose of gaming. After all, if you really wanted to enter the Apple Mac ecosystem, then you can easily buy a MacBook with the M3 Pro chip instead. And with that one and a half thousand dollars, you could easily buy yourself a top tier gaming PC that blows any Apple Silicon Mac out of the water. So that brings us on to the sponsor of today's video, Jawa. Jawa is the best place to buy a pre-built gaming PC. It's a PC gaming marketplace by gamers for gamers. There are tons of talented and creative PC builders on the site, all at very competitive prices. Jawa.gg has all of the buyer and seller protections that you'll need, and it's a great place for individual hardware deals as well. So there's gonna be huge sales on Black Friday, make sure to check it out, and there's a $1,800 gaming PC giveaway. So make sure to enter, just click the link at the top of the Jawa.gg website, and you should also check out the Ultimate Tech Tuber gift guide. Here you can easily find recommended PC gaming gifts in different price categories. For example, you could look at this $949 Black Friday sale PC equipped with an RTX 4060 Ti, a Ryzen 5 5600, and I'm afraid that this relatively modest gaming PC can outperform the M3 Max in virtually every single game. So if you are a really passionate gamer, make sure to think about getting a dedicated gaming PC from Jawa. But for the rest of us Mac gaming aficionados, let's check out the absolute best gaming performance that the M3 Max is capable of. So the first game we're going to be looking at is Baldur's Gate 3, one of the most popular RPGs at the moment and is quite demanding on Apple Silicon Max. Here we're running the game at the Ultra preset at 1440p. And here in the Act 1 area, which is usually less demanding than the rest of the game, we're getting a pretty solid 70, 80, 90 FPS. However, the real test for this game is to try and see how well this runs in Act 3. Thankfully, once you reach the last part of the game, the N3 Max handles this part beautifully, even though there are tons of NPCs just walking around. The density of objects and effects are much higher than earlier acts. We're still walking around in the region of 70, 90 FPS. So on the Mac version of this game, we only have FSR version 1.0. Here we're testing out FSR at quality mode, which basically renders the world at a slightly lower resolution. Everything looks a little bit blurrier, so I wouldn't really bother with this game. 60 FPS is plenty for me. And even in Act 2, where there's lots of lighting effects and spell effects that happen all at once with tons of characters on screen, we're still getting very reasonable frame rates of about 50 to 60 FPS. So next up is No Man's Sky, which we're running at 1440p again on the Ultra Graphics preset. In space, we're hitting an engine cap of 240 FPS. And this is kind of pointless because your MacBook Pro can only display 120 Hertz on the Pro motion screen. Nevertheless, it's pretty impressive that we can get this frame rate even when we're warping between planets. So by default, the Ultra preset sets the Metal FX quality to Performance Mode. So we can tweak this to quality and performance drops to about 190 to 200 FPS. Using the same settings, we can transition between space and planets, which is usually the most demanding part of the game. And even with Metal FX quality mode turned on, on the ground we're getting about 90 to 100 FPS, which is still not too bad, especially as this is above the Ultra Graphics preset default settings. So next up is the recently released Souls-like game Lies of P. We are running this game at 1440p with the high quality preset and Metal FX has been turned on to quality mode. So the game mostly hovers around the 100 FPS mark, ranging from around 90 to 120 FPS. So consistent frame rates and frame timing are very important in a game like this in order to make sure that you land attacks and blocks at the right moment. So the game is pretty much very well optimized for Apple Silicon Max and the M3 Max can handle it beautifully. However, if you wanted more frame rate, then you could set the Metal FX to Balance Mode, and frame rate could get as high as 150 FPS. So next up is Resident Evil Village. This is pretty much the biggest AAA Mac release of the last year, and manages to be extremely well optimized for even the M3 Max chip. Here we're running on a default graphics setting at 1440p using Metal FX upscaling set to Quality Mode. The game is consistently hitting over 120 FPS on these settings, and it's all you really need to play this game on a MacBook Pro. Overall, very impressed with how this plays on the M3 Max. Can't wait to see what Capcom do with Resident Evil 4, which is going to be coming out on Macs and iPhones later this year. 
what gaming benchmark could be complete without looking at Minecraft. So this is running at 1440p. Render, shadow and simulation distance are set to 12 chunks. And here we're running a bunch of mods including fabric, iris and sodium. Here the game is running at a very respectable 700 to 800 FPS at this very basic graphics setting. Part of the reason this is running so fast is due to the fact that we're using a natively optimized version of Java 17 which has been built for the Apple Silicon Mac. Next we're going to be looking at shaders. Here we're using Silda's Enhanced Default Fancy. And this changes the look of the game pretty substantially and it has a big hit on performance but we're still getting 260-70 FPS which is not too bad. Here we're using Silda's Vibrant Shaders 1.51 Extreme with Volumetric Lighting. This is easily one of the most demanding shaders that you can get but the M3 Max handles this beautifully at 118 to 20 FPS. So next up is Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. This is running at 1440p at the very high graphics preset, and FSR is set to quality mode. And of course, there is no Mac version of this game. This is actually the Windows DirectX 12 version being run through Game Porting Toolkit 1.1 through Crossover 23.7 Beta. So even with these high graphics settings, we're hitting about 90 to 140 FPS. So it's quite a large range, depends what's happening in the game at the time. And this is really not bad considering that the DirectX 12 version of this game was previously unplayable on the Apple Silicon Mac, but now possible all thanks to the translation layers provided by Codeweavers and Apple. So just remember these x86 Windows games were never designed to run on an ARM chip, and we have multiple levels of translation going on at the same time including x86 to ARM via Rosetta 2, Windows to Mac via Wine, and DirectX 12 to Metal provided by Game Porting Toolkit's D3D Metal. So next up we're testing Cyberpunk 2077, another DirectX 12 game. Again we're using crossover 23.7 beta with game porting toolkit 1.1. We're running at 1440p under the medium graphics preset. However, I was having issues with AMD FSR and a kind of black screen bug, so I've stuck to medium graphics settings. Here we're using one of the newly implemented features called M Sync, which substantially increases frame rates in Cyberpunk 2077. So, frame rate really depends on what exactly you're doing. Basically, in the open world, we're looking at 60 to 80 frames per second, which even at medium settings is still pretty good considering how demanding this game is. In this driving part, we are getting about 65 FPS. In first person combat it hovers around 60s sometimes dipping into the high 50s. So I know that this doesn't compare favorably to equivalent Windows gaming PCs but the fact that this is running on an integrated ARM chip with all of these translation layers means that this is actually quite impressive. So next up we're going to take a quick look at the game Diablo 4. So this released earlier this year and is a direct x12 game again being run through game porting toolkit 1.1. So here we're running at 1440p under the high graphics preset with AMD FSR set to quality mode. So performance generally hovers around the 90 to 100 or so FPS and stays consistent even though there are lots of enemies on screen. The previous entry in the series, Diablo 3, worked really well on the Apple Silicon Mac despite it being a Rosetta 2 game. So it's very good to see that Diablo 4 can still be played by Mac users using these translation layers. So lastly, we're going to be looking at a game called Lethal Company. So this isn't a big game in the traditional AAA sense, but it is a massively trending game at the moment. Despite the fact that it uses the Unity engine is actually Windows only, so we're going to be playing this through Game Porting Toolkit and Crossover, and I think this is the kind of ideal use case for this type of translation layer. It means that Mac gamers can participate in these online phenomenon games, and it seems to work pretty much perfectly on the Mac, including microphone support, online multiplayer, etc. Now, we're running this game at 1440p. There are no real graphics settings to speak of except resolution. The game is really designed to be run on lower end machines, but despite this, it can be quite demanding on these translation layers because because Unity doesn't do that well using Game Porting Toolkit. Nevertheless, we're getting between about 90 and 130 FPS. And the main thing is that the translation layer doesn't get in the way of the game, so you can be fully immersed and the gameplay just works on the Mac. So anyway, that was my gaming test for the M3 Max chip. Thanks very much to Java for sponsoring this video. If you have any thoughts, please leave a comment. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.